Funding for Schaefer Ellis is provided by Dashlane. Tune until the end to find out more about their amazing service. Hey everyone, I know you all really want me to talk about Shrek 4. Yes! How about this instead? The Madagascar Trilogy. Why not? <laughs> Truth be told, the Shrek 4 script is kind of the most difficult, intricate thing I've ever written, and it's gonna take a ton of time to put together, so I figured let's do something way easier first. Now, DreamWorks seems to have a reputation for low-brow garbage franchises that get milked to death, even though technically Pixar has more franchises under its belt, and only one of those franchises has sequels that outdo the original. Ah! Seriously, what are you people going on about? DreamWorks has four franchises, and they're good. Wait. <laughs> there. Now it's good. I mean, yeah, Shark Tale existed, sure, but at least they knew to sweep that movie under the rug and not make it into a terrible franchise. I mean, it's bad enough being alive when no one wants you, but thankfully, the really bad DreamWorks stuff is usually a once and done. Shrek, Kung Fu Panda, and How to Train Your Dragon, on the other hand, are three movies that warranted a series. Not just because they were really good movies, but because they had stories to tell universes that could be expanded, new themes to explore. Turning these three movies into ongoing sagas was an excellent decision that led to commercial, and more importantly, critical success. The second movie in each of these franchises is often considered better than the first, or at least on par with the first. In addition, the first and second movies in all these franchises garnered an Oscar nomination. I'd say that's pretty admirable, but then again... But you get the idea. These are acclaimed, beloved franchises that show how good DreamWorks can be at taking something that works on a deep, comedic, and emotional level, and following it up with something even better. But then there's Madagascar. What kind of music do you like, Gloria? Hippo ha! <laughs> A true anomaly in the sense that the first movie was not very well received. Like, at all. But it made money, had highly marketable side characters, and was overall popular enough with audiences that DreamWorks said, let's make a bajillion more of these! And so we have the only cynically conceived DreamWorks franchise. As of right now, Boss Baby 2 is on its way. Nobody reveres the Madagascar trilogy quite like they do these other franchises. I mean, the memes are good, but that's not at all an indication of quality. Overall, Madagascar's success is kind of ridiculous. But with that said, in case you couldn't tell by the title of the video, I really, really, really like the second movie. And I want to fully explain why this film, while nowhere near the level as these other DreamWorks Part 2s, still stands out as the greatest cinematic achievement ever based on the nation of Madagascar ever made ever. But first, we need to go back to the beginning of time. 2005. Who can make a sunrise? In 2005, I saw two different movies in theaters that are about the same level of quality. Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, and Madagascar. I really can't decide which one is better. They're both not too good, but I also kind of like them despite their gaping, noteworthy flaws. Let's talk about Madagascar and not stoke the flames of r slash prequel memes any further. Madagascar is a blatantly plotless movie. The first 20 minutes or so is pretty alright, at least once you get past the exceptionally unappealing animation. I'm one of the few people who actually likes the character designs. I think they're distinct and great for comedic effect. But the way these animals are rendered is a little bit nauseating, truth be told. Still, this whole setup with Marty running away from home and being chased down and the penguins getting ratted out, boys, it's pretty enjoyable. Then we get to the titular island nation and... Saints. The movie is pretty much aimless from here on out. The lemur leader King Julian wants to use them to drive away their evil predator, the Fusa. But then the movie forgets about that because Alex and Marty are mad at each other. Then they get over that and become friends again. But now the movie is about Alex being very hungry, so he tries to eat Marty. <coughs> wait, wait, huh? I thought the movie was about Marty not wanting to be cooped up in the zoo. He's supposed to be the main character, right? This is his struggle. But then they drop that in favor of Alex going savage and everyone dealing with the repercussions of that. Also, they make a ton of forced pop culture jokes, and this is the part where I grab my Switch and start playing Fire Emblem because I've lost interest. But then I remember that it's my duty to pay attention to the movie, so I don't desecrate the integrity of a video that's meant to be a serious dissection of the Madagascar trilogy. Like, if there's any video I really want to take seriously, this is it, Chief. This is the most important dissertation of my life. The cultural significance of these films is infinitely unquantifiable, and expressing such a thesis remains the most impactful assignment of my existence as a living creature on planet Earth. 
So yeah, I watched the rest of the movie and it's all right. It's pretty much exclusively held together by the comedy, which is actually kind of strong. The use of what a wonderful world is particularly inspired. That tranquilizer trip scene was the funniest thing in the world to me as a kid, and it's probably still in my top 50 funniest things list as an adult. Same with Sugar Honey Iced Tea, even though that joke went completely over my head as a kid. I just liked it because funny zebra said random thing. The main actors have some great delivery and sometimes a strong line or two. The penguins are amazing, obviously. And that's about it. There isn't a whole lot to say about this movie. As a kid, I loved it and rewatched it over and over, so I think nostalgia has something to do with my current mild enjoyment of it. It is legitimately funny at times, too. But it's not really that great. This franchise really had nowhere to go but up. Thankfully, that's what they did. Madagascar Escape to Africa is shockingly good. I'm not memeing ya. You know what you were getting into when you clicked on this video. Now you're gonna look at it. Look me in the eye and tell me this movie isn't absolutely hysterical. Is she dead? No. <laughs> See, this is not a perfect sequel in the same sense as Shrek 2 or Kung Fu Panda 2 or Dragon Tales 2. It doesn't really change the trajectory of this franchise or leave any sort of undeniable impact. It's not the most emotional thing in the world either. What it is, however, is a delightful, incredibly lighthearted farce. This is a farce of a movie. I think that becomes evident with the introduction to the villain. Look at how blatantly obvious he makes his own evilness out to be. I'm better looking, I have better hair, I'm deceivingly smart, and I want everyone else to do what I say. This never registered to me as a villain that needs to be taken seriously. It registers that this Alec Baldwin lion, like the rest of the movie, is meant to be taken as a joke. This movie is a never-ending stream of jokes, and they just work for me. The style of humor is completely overhauled from the first film. Instead of constant pop culture references and not much else, this movie has a ton of legit funny exchanges that don't rely on pop culture as a crutch. And to this movie's credit as a legit movie, it actually has a consistent narrative, and it gives its characters stuff to do? In the first movie, no one has explicit plot relevance except for Alex, Marty, and the Penguins briefly. You could cut the rest of this bunch of jokers out of the movie with some retooling. And I mean, like, you could do the same here with Gloria and Melman, but the difference is that these two have actual plot lines this time instead of just hanging out like they did in the first movie. They have a bizarre, shockingly enjoyable love triangle with a delicious chunkster Moto Moto. Watch this snack emerge from the water as this iconic iconic theme song blast throughout the savannah. Every frame a painting indeed. But then it turns out Moto Moto is a superficial, boring, stupid head who's only into Gloria because she dummy thick. So Melman comes in and tells him what's what. Listen, Mototo. You better treat this lady like a queen. It's really pathetic, but also surprisingly kind of sweet and endearing. Like, you can tell he's really trying. I'm not talking about Melman, by the way. I'm talking about Eaton Cohen, one of the three screenwriters of this movie. It's like, they're taking these ridiculous characters in this ridiculous scenario, in this ridiculous franchise, and they're giving them stuff. L like, actual emotional stuff. And while it's not amazing, I don't know, I just really like it. Cause they're trying, and the fact that it makes me feel even the tiniest bit, while also simply drawing me in with the absurdity of the scenario, is honestly really admirable. Julian, stop this, this is crazy! Oh, suddenly throwing a giraffe into a volcano to make water is crazy! Yes! This is not a subversive masterpiece or a shockingly spectacular film, it's just a really strong comedy that also ties into the first film very nicely. That's right, it's time to talk about about The Madagascar trilogy does not have themes. I think that's a pretty uncontroversial statement, but it does have a narrative as poorly set up as it was in the first movie. But you know what this movie does? It buckles down on what the first one set up. There are some throwaway lines about Marty not knowing if he's white with black stripes or black with white stripes. Then in the sequel, when Alex finds Marty in this crowd of identical zebras, he tells him, these guys, they're white with black stripes. You're black with white stripes. They didn't have to put that in, but they did. They actually cared about following up the journeys of these characters. Look at Alex in the prologue, trapped in a crate, adrift at sea, 
using the same imagery as the first film. That's so neat. There's a throwaway line in the first movie where Melman thinks he's dying because he finds a brown spot on his body. And in this movie, that's a legit plot point. Wow. But unfortunately, I must be totally fair and address the continuity errors present in Madagascar Escape to Africa. I, I, I guess this is my life now. Number one, Marty says in the prologue that he wants to go to Connecticut, but in the first film, he doesn't find out about Connecticut until the night he leaves the zoo. Ding! Alex has an Africa-shaped birthmark on his paw that wasn't there at all in the first film. Should have just put it on his foot. Ding! Alex knows it's Marty because of the bite mark on his butt, but the butt mark can't be seen in most shots in this movie until the ending. Ding! Okay, glad that's over with. In terms of things I don't care for, I'll admit Marty's plotline about feeling the same as every other zebra has no payoff. And... Yeah, no, that's it. That's everything I don't like. Everyone has something going on, and I just find all of it funny. Alex disappointed his father after getting tricked by the Alec Baldwin lion. Melman is now a witch doctor who thinks he's gonna die. The penguins and chimps are rebuilding the plane and arguing about union disputes and whatnot. King Julian organizes a volcano sacrifice to restore the watering hole to its former glory. Mort is stranded and being chased by a shark. And that old lady from that one scene in the first movie is organizing a colony of strangers in New Yorkers. Everyone has something to do, and the jokes make their plot lines entertaining throughout. The drama isn't amazing, but the wacky tone makes it so none of it really needs to be taken all that seriously. And much like the great cinematic sequels of yore, all of these plot lines converge in the epic finale. No, it's not as good as Shrek 2's finale. No, nothing will ever be as good as Shrek 2's finale. But this climactic conclusion is iconic in its own right. There is no sacrifice greater than someone else. No! Medic! First, the setup is nice where Gloria stops Melman's volcano sacrifice, the chimps blackmail the penguins, Alex saves his dad through the power of musical theater, and yeah, it's good stuff. But Nana was not amused. Dad, look out! Why are you son of a- So the penguins come in to rescue Alex and his dad with the plane. Hallelujah. But through a miscommunication, decide to take out the dam instead of escaping. So they put on Barry Manilow and face off against Nana and her dam in an epic showdown. Tell them no! Pull up! They'll kill us! There's gotta be another way! They say no, pull up! Kill us! There's no other way! That's it out! It's hysterical, intense, and pretty much the best scene in the entire trilogy. And after Nana beats the shit out of the embarrassing Alec Baldwin lion, that's pretty much the end. So yeah, I don't have any deep analysis on how expertly constructed this movie is. It is just a comedy that I really, really, really like. Look out, I think Motomoto Moto likes you. It takes the few elements of the first film that worked and expands them immensely, making for an incredibly fun viewing experience. Everyone has something going on, everything intersects in fun ways, the humor's great, the energy is kept at a consistently high level, I enjoy the music. They could have so easily stopped trying considering they were making a sequel to a movie that pretty much didn't try at all. You maniac! But instead they made a wacky, entertaining, screwball adventure that feels like it has a ton of reverence for the franchise as a whole. As weird as that sounds. I hated this movie as a kid, but I actually really like it now. Go figure. Too bad they couldn't keep this momentum going. Oh no! Madagascar 3 is the worst one. I know a ton of people generally like this one the most, but I respectfully don't agree in the slightest. This one is boring and aimless like the first, but it doesn't even have the courtesy of being funny. This time the gang gets tired of waiting in Africa so they snorkel all the way to Europe, even though in the first movie Alex says he can't swim. I, I promise I'm not as invested in Madagascar lore as this video makes me seem, I'm, I'm just doing my job here guys. So they're chased by this police captain who is actually pretty fun and enjoyable, I'll give the movie that. I also love this car chase scene, it's really fun and and hysterical, very much in line with the tone of the second film. Be cool! Be cool! Hi, officer! Is there a problem? Hey. And honestly, I really like the conclusion they come to when they do get back to New York and realize that their lives are so much more interesting now, and going back to the zoo would just feel kind of wrong. That's a nice ending. I still don't like the movie. None of the original cast is given anything to do this time, except Alex, who's kind of organizing the whole circus thing, I guess. Marty, Melman, Gloria, the Penguins, the Lemurs, they're all just kind of hanging out. I mean, King Julian has this subplot where he's in an abusive relationship with a bear. 
no thank you. I don't really have a ton to say about this movie. I just don't like it. It's not funny, it's not entertaining, it's not compelling. The circus performance is visually pretty neat, but the whole thing is ruined for me by the inexplicable, ill-fitting music choice. Katy Perry's firework is so played out, even back in 2012, and it clashes with the tone of these movies so hard. There's a ton of focus poured into these new characters at the circus, but I just don't find them very interesting, I'm sorry. They tried with this tiger and his story about not being able to fit into increasingly tinier holes, I'll give them that. But they really didn't try to make anyone else engaging or entertaining, except the villain, like I said. The whole using the circus to get back to America plot is really contrived and pointless, since they could've just used the money they used to buy the circus to fly back home, which they literally say in the movie. I don't even know why we bought a circus in the first place. We had enough dough for a plane! That's not cute, I'm sorry. The gags also just get on my nerves. Remember Circus Afro? <laughs> Remember the opera scene with the villains that feels like a certain illumination sequence? Remember when a little boy gets stuck up an elephant's anus, which is never addressed again? I don't like that. This movie just feels more babyish and juvenile than the other two, or even the rest of the DreamWorks catalog. It just feels like they watched Despicable Me and said, Hey, let's be that! but worse. On top of that, it hardly has any connective tissue with the first two movies at all. It's just a circus movie with the Madagascar characters copy pasted on top. Until, like I said, the ending when they get back home. I don't know, I guess I can understand why people like this one the most. It has its own unique pace and energy to it. But for me, it just dropped the ball by not utilizing most of its characters, losing the clever wit of the first two films, the second especially, and overall just not taking the story in a satisfying direction. It has a nice series conclusion for sure, but for the most part, it's a mess, and not a very entertaining mess at that, like the first film. And I normally don't like talking about spin-offs in the same breath as the original series, since I like considering them their own thing. But I guess I might as well talk about the Penguins of Madagascar movie! It's alright, better than the third movie, I like the Uncharted 3 sequence, the villain is funny. Basically this movie is Minions if the people who made Minions actually gave a shit. 6 out of 10, the show is better. If there's anything to take away from this video, it's that... I, I, I don't know actually what the point of this was. I just needed a lighthearted DreamWorks romp since Shrek 4 has so much to unpack. Bottom line is, Madagascar is weird. It's a weird series when compared to every other DreamWorks franchise, which had consistent themes and emotional storylines. Madagascar feels comparatively Illumination-esque in its tone and approach to storytelling, but I think it's far better than most of what they put out. It did tell a story with a natural beginning, middle, and end, even if the steps it took along the way were kind of stupid and not well thought out. But the Fast-paced humor and delightful side characters are wonderful and give this series a unique edge. I only have fond memories of the first film, even though it's not that good. I respect the third film for taking the series to a natural conclusion, even if I think it's actually pretty bad. But then there's the second film, which I just found to be an amazing, witty, balls-to-the-wall blast of a comedy. The pacing, the writing, the visuals, the music, everything came together for this brief moment in time and made something really entertaining. Even if, technically, yeah, it isn't a strong strong dramatic picture like these other DreamWorks part twos. But I don't care. I think this movie is great and y'all can't stop me, so there. It's currently on Netflix as I record this, so give it a watch before they take it off like they took off Phineas and Ferb and The Clone Wars. I mean, come on! Can't you wait till Disney Plus is out? Anyway, that's that. I guess there's no more DreamWorks movies I really want to talk about, so there's no reason not to finally discuss Shrek Forever After- Wait a minute, Over the Hedge exists! I need to talk about that! No, 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 stop! No! No more delaying the Shrek 4 video on this channel. Okay. I actually have finished the Shrek 4 script in the time since I recorded this. It'll be out soon. As long as someone doesn't try to hack into my account and steal it. <laughs> I did it! Oh god, the penguins hacked all my accounts and stole all my personal data. I probably should have used different passwords, but like, trying to remember a bunch of them is way too hard. I just changed one of the letters at the end and hope no one notices. And curses! That was my downfall, for the penguins have figured out my ruse and hijacked my shipment of Tamatoa plushies. If only I had some sort of device that could keep track of all my passwords and secure my online browsing data. Oh wait! 
Dashlane exists! Dashlane is a fantastic service with a ton of amazing applications. It can autofill your personal info like addresses, credit cards, and passwords, which makes online checkouts a breeze. Say goodbye to that super annoying forgot password button forever. Plus, the passwords are accessible on multiple devices, so you don't have to worry about re-entering them on your phone or anything. On top of that, they offer a VPN so you can't be tracked when browsing the web, meaning those pesky penguins are never gonna get your information. You can also access internet content in any country, so whether whether you're in New York, Madagascar, Africa, or Europe, you can enjoy all the best exclusive content any country has to offer. But what if someone hacks into Dashlane itself, you may ask? Well, you see, Dashlane stores and decrypts all of your information with a master password on your device. So even if someone did hack Dashlane, it'd be like breaking into Fort Knox but not being able to open any of the vaults, because not even Dashlane has the keys. So unless you go around sharing your master password, hackers aren't getting their hands on those cheap Easy dibbles, I mean private information. If all this sweet, sweet security sounds good to you, go to dashlane.com slash frillis to get Dashlane free on your first device, and use the promo code frillis to get 10% off the premium version of Dashlane. Secure your web browsing today.